Hi everyone, welcome to the May K-Drama Check-In. If you're new around here, you'll realize very quickly that there is a bunch of K-Drama related content on this channel. From in-depth reviews to recommendations by genre, most recently we are doing these monthly check-ins where we have lots of fun chatting about dramas that I've been watching. So if you're the new kid on the block, make sure that you are subscribed, like and share this video, and of course share your comments down below. And if you want to browse any K-dramas, I would point you to our nice playlist on the channel featuring K-dramas by genre and also reviews and of course the annual awards. Anyways, that does bring us to our fourth video in the series for the month of May. Per usual, we'll start with what I've watched or have been watching. Then we'll go into my first impressions and thoughts on these K-dramas. And we'll finally end with my top recommendation or make that plural. We'll see. Hope that sounds good to you because here are all the K-dramas that I've been watching or have finished this past month. Yes, if you see my February, March, or April videos, you'll see that this list is quite short in comparison. It happens. Busy life in combination with things that are not catching my fancy. I'm picky. What can I say? So let's dive deeper into these four that made it past my filter. First up, we have Tomorrow, which is a fantasy K-drama that can also be found on Netflix. The drama follows a unique team of Grim Reapers who are tasked with preventing suicides. Through each episode, we explore living hells born out of societal issues such as bullying, PTSD due to war, sexual assault, and more. While I couldn't quite give this drama a 5 out of 5 stars, mostly because I'm a tough grader, I think this was definitely a solid 16 episodes if you're looking for a well-written, heartfelt plot, head-turning outfits, fantastic supernatural elements, and a sprinkle of comedic moments to balance out the heaviness. Next up is Again My Life, which is also a fantasy K-drama but it is about a young, ambitious prosecutor who is given a second chance at life, quite literally, as he is resurrected to get revenge and more importantly, bring a villainous politician to justice. I would say that this K-drama is refreshing in the sense that it follows a character answering the question, what would you do differently if you could turn back time? For a main character, it seems like studying hard, honing his combat skills, being a good son, and befriending a bunch of allies, including quite a few ladies, are all part of the answer. Third, we have a K-drama that was previously on my bucket list that I finally had a chance to watch and finish. 2521. This is a romance coming of age drama, so if you're in the mood for some uplifting good feels, throw it on Netflix. Spunky good feels from episode to episode will turn back your clock and reinvigorate you, like you still maintain the comfortable life of being a couch potato. Last but not least, we have Shooting Stars, which is still airing, a rom-com that has received praise from folks in the South Korean entertainment industry for its realism. I think this drama is pretty cute and fun. However, I would say that my attention span is somewhat hanging by a thread, especially since we've cruised past the halfway point. We shall see if the last four episodes will be a redemption. Okay, so which of these would I recommend? Ding ding ding! 2521, which technically didn't even air this past month. As many of you know, it took me a while to be in the mood for something this wholesome in a positive way, and I was afraid the hype would be the overhyped kind of drama, you know? But I'm glad I came around. While I wouldn't quite put this on my list of top K-dramas of all time, I think this drama was quite refreshing. Major kudos, honestly, to Kim tae acting. Not to spoil this bit for anyone, but when someone says this drama has a sad ending, I really don't quite get that. I totally saw that from episode 1 in terms of how things would play out, and also, it was not that sad. Maybe because I've watched too many K-dramas? But anyways, I would still highly recommend this K-drama for anyone who wants a nice, refreshing, you know, dose of summer in their lives, um, especially as we navigate youth and also, I don't know, retro vibes. Woohoo hoo! Anyways, that is it for the May K-drama check-in. Thank you so much for watching and please remember to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up so more K-drama fans can find their way into this little community that we are building here. 
Kgram Addicts, this is for you. Please let me know what your thoughts are on my thoughts and first impressions of these K-dramas and of course my top recommendation of this whole list, which was pretty short this month. I'll be back soon with more K-drama content. Bye!